right. Uh, so thank you very much for the introduction. So um, I suppose I'll jump right into it since time is short. Uh, so the, the title of the presentation that uh, I'm giving today is the development of a community action planning framework in Victoria for addressing complex problems. So we've spoken a lot about complex problems today. Um, and a lot of what I'll discuss is in the context of obesity. So we know obesity is absolutely a very complex issue. Um, and part of that complexity comes from the issue that um, this is rooted in a wide variety of different determin uh, determinants uh, that operate across various sectors of the community and also various organisational levels. So it's a tricky issue to tackle. So we know that the most effective responses to complex problems are those that are community led and that work um, in multiple settings and across those multiple organisational levels. Um, and we also have spoken a little bit about sustainability today, so those most effective responses uh, operate within the existing capacity, so don't require too much extra input um, to get them up and running and keep them going. But having said that obesity is a complex problem, the issue that we have is that there's not really a lot in the way of, sorry, there's not really a lot in the way of practical tools out there for people to use to actually engage with that complexity, to um, conceptualise it or make many inroads into understanding it. And then if we were to actually make inroads into understanding and engaging with that complexity, complexity, sorry, um, we don't have a lot of tools to work with planning responses to that. So if we get a good idea of the complexity, what do we actually do in response to it? So we set about this research with the aim to create um, some logic models of complex community health problems we were looking to engage community stakeholders to get the right people um, to think about that complexity together and also to plan local responses using complexity. Thank you. The next slide. So the, uh, the method we developed for doing this involved uh, three workshop sessions. We've done this with groups ranging from 15 to 20 to 50 up to 100 at the absolute outside um, important community stakeholders, so people who um, are related in, in their work and their life to the problem, in this case, obesity, that we're wanting to investigate. And um, we work over three sessions to develop uh, a system model, so a, a complex kind of logic model, which explains the drivers of obesity in that community setting. So we work about um, discussing the issue with these people, deciding what are those important determinants, and identifying those complex um, interdependencies. And you can see an example of a map there in that sessions one to two on the side that looks quite similar to the one that uh, Steve presented earlier in his, um, his presentation. It's the same sort of model that we develop. So this is a um, conceptualization of the complexity of this issue within the community. Uh, and that, that first workshop session runs for about 90 minutes and the goal of that first session is to just build that model. In a second session we come back um, and work again with the community to validate that model and I'm going to have to speed up here because I'm running out of time. So we work to validate that model. And then in the third session, we engage a broader group. So we expand that group out, get um, the important community leaders in the room to create action ideas. It's a bit blurry on the slide. Oh, sorry. Um, we create, am I able to duck back just for one second? So we create um, action ideas in response to that model. So looking at the model and then also presenting um, a summary of the evidence of what's known to work in response to obesity. Through using this process, they were able to identify uh, that the council, through their leadership and, um, and being role models for the community, uh, were an integral part of that. And they were able to, through that workshop process, make the decision that uh, they needed to ban um, soft drinks in council-run premises. Um, so that was an example of how that workshop in that setting was able to lead to the identification of some tangible actions uh, that were acted upon by that community. Uh, and so I'm going to leave it there because I've run out of time and move on to the next person. Thank you. Just to explain the process, so we've got three people presenting and then we're going to ask questions, okay? So you will have the opportunity to ask uh, Josh or Julie or Cara a question. The next person to present is Cara and she's going to be telling us about joint replacements over a regional uh, level and I'm really interested in this because from a farming perspective um, we see lots of farmers that have to access joint replacements and the distance that they have to travel and so on a personal level know a lot about it. So I'll hand over to Cara and let's have a look at this map. Hi everyone, I'll try to be quick since we're running short of time. Um, so I'm presenting um, some data on joint replacements from the Aging Chronic Disease and Injury Study and um, 
as Julie presented before and as Umba presented before, it's the same type of study, so um, hopefully I won't have to go into too much detail about it. Um, so the data from this study comes from the uh, National Joint Replacement Registry, which, um, as somebody mentioned before, is uh, very complete because they cross-reference. Cross and I've collected data for uh, the region of Western Victoria for the years 2011 to 2013. Next slide, please. Uh, so these are the uh, maps for uh, hip replacements, knee replacements, and total meaning all the different types of replacements at any site um, for the region of Western Victoria. So the important places to note here are Geelong, Ballarat, Warrnambool, and Horsham, so just so you, so you can get an idea of the size of our study region. Um, so what you can see is um, that hip and knee are on the same scale, so in general, uh, there are more knee replacements than there are hip replacements. And for hip replacements, the highest uh, incidences are in central goldfields here and in Queenscliff, which is down here. And for knee replacements, it's high in uh, Pyrenees, Queenscliff again, and this area called Yariambiak, which is uh, a bit of a remote location in the area. And for all replacements, again, it's the same offenders, uh, Pyrenees, Queenscliff, and Yariambiak. Uh, next slide, please. Yep, and finally, I just want to quickly go through the differences between uh, men and women in the area. So, again, these are on the same scale. So what you can see is that, in general, females have higher amounts of joint replacements than men. And uh, for men, the highest uh, amounts of joint replacements are, again, in this Pyrenees area and also in Queenscliff, again. And for women, it's still Pyrenees and Queenscliff, but there's also... Golden Plains, which is quite close to Geelong, Horsham, and uh, this area called Hindmarsh, which is again another relatively remote area. So um, thank you, and hopefully there'll be some interesting questions. <laughs> While I'm looking at that, I'm wondering if all the knee replacements are to do with people that breed sheep, you know, and the sheep run into their knees and then they need to get replacements.